Two weeks removed from the scoreless draw with Columbus, the fans file back into Jill Wen Field as their Timbers search for goals and search for wins today against the Chicago Fire, and it's presented by Progress. Bruner, after two games away with a hip flexor injury, he's back in the center defense. Mike Chabala, he replaced Jewsbury at half at right back, and he stays there today, everything else the same. Arthur Friedrich, former German World Cup center back, is out with an injury. Jalil Anibaba slides into the middle. He's been in impressive form since he came back into the team from injury. Deals with the problem of Adora's pace. It's a back four problem. Troy Perkins has got to be alive. But that's why Mascuro versus Aduro is my key bank matchup in the match. Our referee today, Silvio Petrescu, gets us underway. The Timbers in the first choice green as ever here at Jail Wen Field, Chicago. Chabala in towards Boyd. He finds him. It's a wonderful stop by Johnson. And the rebound cleared away by Gargan. That was almost in slow motion there. Chris Boyd beating out both Chicago center backs. Frank Song going to take this one. Scare it. Chance to get it back in the mixer. Boy, trying to the spectacular. Bruner is on hand to give the Timbers the early lead. Well, they needed to go from somewhere. Maybe not the source they thought. And Eric Bruner, well, we've seen him do this with his hat. This time he shows the finishing touch of the centre forward. Both centre half play a part. Mascara does well just to keep the ball alive. And then Boyd gets a flick and he reacts really well, Eric Bruner. Hooks it into the net. It's just the confidence that the Timbers needed. Eric Bruner's fourth goal as a Timber, his first this year. Now fired in by Papa, a spill, and uh, Bruner cleaned it up. I think Perkins had it in the end, but Timber is rather safe than sorry. Yep. Bruder does well in the end because although I think Perkins has got it as a defender, it's safety first. You have to get the ball out and then apologize to, to your goalkeeper and get on with things. From Papa, now Cassini to take the third corner kick of the game for the fire. Mosquera gets the header away. Miyako trying to control it. Feeds it back in. Pardo, wonderful stop by Troy Perkins. Well, he's finger pointing and questions being asked in the defense, but yet again the goalkeeper comes up big. When the ball falls, it looks as though all in terms of Perkins is going to find his way to the back of the net. And he throws himself again, Perkins, it's a brilliant save. The best clearance from Stephen Smith, only as far as Pop, and he'll load up the left foot. Oh, it falls right in front for Ani Baba, who's tied the game for Chicago. All came about from a, a sloppy clearance in the end from Stephen Smith. And Annie Bob found himself in the box. Plenty of time, takes a touch, and this time Perkins can do nothing about it. Well, the for fortunate how he finds his way to Annie Bob, but fairness to the defender, keeps his composure, hits the target, goes across the goalkeeper. Chicago find himself level. Now Dan Gargan looking to break out for the fire. Oh, lovely flick off there. And Cigaris, the cross, Pardo. Did he miss time his jump or something there, Robbie? Yeah, ball was probably just a little bit too big for him. He didn't quite get his timing onto the ball. But we talked about the, the speed and the pace of the counter-attack from Chicago. This is from a Timbers corner, remember. And the ball just holds up a little bit for Pardo. Can't get his head onto the ball. See, so this time to take the halftime switch. Bruner and Mosquera are forward. And it finds Boyd, it's in! And the Timbers have retaken the lead! Well, again, it's all about the quality of the ball into the box. Salzizo delivers, Chris Boyd gets a flick, and it actually comes off a red shirt. But do they mind? Not at all. The Timbers find themselves up again 2-1. Boyd does well just to get across the near post, and then it, it comes off a... The heel, I think it is, of a Chicago defender. Right in front of Tom Johnson, actually the knee. Yeah, Logan paused there, yeah. turned it in. That's what happens when you put quality into the box. It causes all kinds of problems. Second time this year, the Timbers, of course, have been recipients of an own goal. But, Robbie, as you say, that's sometimes what happens. A good driven ball in. 
Create a deflection, create some chaos. And the Timbers now back in front. 20 minutes, a big 20 minutes in the Timber season for me. Got to manage this situation now. Wallace on the end of the knockdown for Boyd. Wallace's attempt is not off by much. Sean Johnson will have you believe that he's got this covered. He leaves Rodney Wallace's foot. I'm not sure he's... He's as certain it's going wide. I think he's pleased to see it go the wrong side of the post. Good ball. It's got in the end of it. Grassini. He goes down in a heap. Referee blows his whistle. And it's going to be a dive on Sebastian Grassini. Well, he's been consistent all day, the referee. He hasn't brought any of those kind of falls to the ground or feigning of injuries by the Chicago players. He stood firm. Grassini doesn't like it. I mean, what Gazzini does is he makes sure there's contact between him and the Timbers player. And it isn't a foul because he's trying to induce a challenge to win a penalty. The referee is 100% right. Now Sigaris. Papa turns inside of Chabala. Gazzini harried by Chara. Pardo thinking about the attempt. Blocked by Perlaza. It falls in front for Baruch. Broken up by Bruner. He was on side. Well, I tell you, that's brilliant defending. Recovery defending from... Well, what about Bruner. that as Barry gets the knock on Perlaza. And that'll be a yellow card for Austin Barry. Well, this is Bruner. Just puts that big left foot out and gets something on the ball. And at the other end, collapses away. And Barry knows exactly what he's doing. He may be a rookie. Just blocks off the run. Jabal heads. Zizo can carry forward. Timbers beat Chicago twice last year. Both times they came in looking for traction. Winless in their first three games. Beat them 4-2 at home. Winless in seven. Beat them 1-0 on the road. One win in nine. And they beat them 2-1 today. And exactly Robbie Earl with the Timbers won out of this game. Well, it's almost a huge sigh of relief because it was a performance the team knew they needed to put in here at home today. Things haven't been going so well. They've kept the clean sheets, but they haven't been able to score goals. They've done that today. Got a little bit nervy once or twice, but on the whole, it's the kind of performance that the coach will enjoy. He'll know he's got a little bit of work to do. Well, that's an important three points for the Timbers.